Hello, everyone, and welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Transportation System. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Double Dose of Disney podcast. As always, my name is Brittany and I am joined here by my dapper Dan loving husband, Tony. This week on the podcast, we are talking all about one of the things that truly sets Disney apart, which is live entertainment. When you're at Disney World, there is detail in every single touch and I personally feel like Disney spares no expense to do anything that they do, and that includes live entertainment. So we always prioritize it on our vacation, and we truly feel like everyone else should too. So hopefully with listening to this podcast, you may learn a few new um, live entertainment options at Walt Disney World to add to your next trip, whether this is like your 100th trip or maybe ones to prioritize on your first trip to Walt Disney World. So you ready to get into it? Yeah, I would say most of these are probably like filler, something that you wouldn't like necessarily prioritize, but you would if, yeah. you knew, if you knew about it instead of just wandering aimlessly trying to find something you tail in on something of a show or something. Right. And I guess, you know, live entertainment, I personally think that the way that we utilize um, seeing live entertainment at Walt Disney World is we use it... Um, is a, like Tony said, is a filler in your day to kind of take a break from like walking around the parks, waiting in lines, getting on attractions, all that stuff to kind of break up everything and just give yourself time to rest, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Sit recuperate. down. Yeah. Enjoy. And if, and you enjoy the entire park a lot more when you actually get the full, you know, you know what's going on. You're not, it's not just about the eats and the, and the rides. There's a lot more to do. Right. And see. Yeah, there's so much that you get to do and see when you prioritize live entertainment. And um, it just makes, I personally feel like it makes your day so much more relaxing. So we'll start over at the Magic Kingdom. Um, starting off with the Let the Magic Begin Welcome Show. That starts um, the day in the Magic Kingdom that is like the opening show. So it is whenever the park opens. So today it was at 7.55 because the park opened at 8. Um, that show lasts for five minutes and it's on the castle stage. We honestly have never seen that show because we don't get to the castle for rope drop. Or I'm sorry, the Magic Kingdom for rope drop or really any part. Currently. Yeah, currently. That will probably change with the girls. But um, there's also the Casey's Corner Pianist. Um, there's show times throughout the day for that. That's like a 20 minute show and you can just kind of like walk up and see that one. Um, I would prioritize this one it, when you want to eat there. Right. Or just prioritize like, when the time is ours so you can actually see it. Because these guys are actually cool. Like, about 20 minutes. And a lot of times they will actually take requests. Too. I seem to take requests of certain songs. But they can literally play any song on the piano. Yeah, they do like a Fast mix. Forward. They do a mix of Disney songs as well as like they'll play other songs. But they prioritize Disney songs. Yeah, like right now they're playing that for Christmas. And I mean, they can literally do it all. The, um, well, like the Beauty and the Beast songs, Happily Ever After, all of those songs. And that, of course, takes place right outside of Casey's Corner. Um, if you've never been to the Magic Kingdom before, Casey's Corner is an American food restaurant. It's hot dogs and corn dog nuggets, but it's amazing. Yeah, chili cheese fries. Chili wow. cheese fries. Um, they used to have Walt's chili the during the 50th cheese. anniversary. They don't have that anymore. Yeah, we always get the corn dog nuggets. At least Tony does. And then do you get you always get chili cheese fries yeah, too? Yeah, those loaded up fries. Like every trip we get those. Corners in the foot. As soon as you're walking. At the end of uh, Main Street on the left, mm -hmm. on the corner. Yeah, and the castle in the um, Casey's Corner pianist is playing outside of Casey's Corner on the side that faces the um, Cinderella Castle. So that's where the tables are outside of Casey's Corner. You could just like sit and listen to it while you're like, eating or something like so that. More than one side. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of like a it's side like, and two partial, one partial. Kind of like it probably makes up two sides. Yeah, there's two sides. There's the one side that's on Main Street, and then there's the other side that's facing the castle. It's like a little nook. Yes, like a little nook. Next up is the Dapper Dance. The Dapper Dance perform each day, starting roughly around 9 a.m. and going to 4 p.m. They have shows throughout the day. When you are going to Magic Kingdom or any of the Disney parks in general, watch, um, pay attention to the Disney World app because the show times can vary each day. But the Dapper Dance is a 20 minute performance. This is a barbershop quartet. They perform outside of the Emporium. We love watching the Dapper Dance. Like, it's such a fun show to get to watch. Um, there's like four performers. They're really funny. They sing different songs. And this is another thing that. Like Tony said, you want to prioritize in your day 
just being able to like relax. So if you're walking into the Magic Kingdom, um, maybe try to catch it on your way in. Or if you're just having like some slow time during your day, maybe go around this lunchtime like if you're getting started. cases. This gets your day started like on it's magical. The street, yes, kind of sets up the old old feel of it. These guys will tell jokes. I don't think they take requests or anything, but no. they're, they're really interactive. That's all they do. It just kind of, I feel kind of awkward sometimes. When I'm saying yeah, like me too. I don't know why. No, and it, you don't feel awkward. Like, you shouldn't. It's just so fun. Like, you're watching it. Make us really only one sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of people will just, like, walk up and walk off. We love watching the show, so we'll stay there the whole time to watch the show. Sometimes they walk up and like, all right, I feel like we're just looking at it. <laughs> Yeah, and they used to, so during, like, COVID, they would um, not perform, like, at the Emporium. They performed above, like, the train station, and it was, like, this, like, really magical way to walk in. But you didn't get to be as up close and personal with them. So now that they're back to the Emporium, it's a really fun way to, like, start walking in the Magic Kingdom and start your day. Next at the Magic Kingdom is Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair. This is, like, a castle stage show with characters, and it typically runs from, like, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. There's different show times. This is a fun show. If you're in the Magic Kingdom and all of a sudden you see fireworks going off, you know that the show is taking place. Um, we small, small fireworks. Yeah, small fireworks. They're more like flares, I guess you would say. No, just don't get your hopes up thinking you're going to see a fireworks. Show. Yeah, no. Um, like little flares. We've caught parts of this show before when we were waiting for the Festival of Fantasy Parade. Um, and it's a fun show to like watch, especially if you have kids. If you have kids that love the different characters and stuff like that, you'll want to prioritize all this, that show. Well, all this stuff keeps the day going. If, you're, if you can catch this stuff as you're just walking around, then you're not just aimlessly walking right. with like, nothing to do for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I totally, I totally agree with that. Um, next up is the Main Street Philharmonic, which is actually a band, a marching band, and they march from down Main Street USA. They also march through Storybook Circus, which I didn't know. Their show times are between 125 and 530 currently, but again, if you want to prioritize that, check the uh, Disney World app. This is a marching band that's, again, going to perform different Disney songs, but one of the coolest things about this, um, about the band, is that the culmination of their show culminates in Town Square at 5 p.m., and that um, is like the Town Square Plaza where the... Um, where the American flag is. And there they played the Star Spangled Banner as the flag's lord. And then the flag retreat takes place. If you don't know about the flag retreat, the flag retreat is Disney's way of... So if you, you're at Walt Disney World, a fun fact is there's only one true American flag. And that's the one that's at the Town Square Plaza. Um, all the rest of the flags are like missing a star or a stripe or something like that. Because they're not lowered each day. This flag is lowered every day at 5 p.m. And there's a veteran from the, that's picked in the Magic Kingdom that day. They get to take part in the flag retreat. So this is really cool. And that's the culmination of the Main Street Philharmonic's performance for the day. Um, we've never gotten to catch the flag retreat yet. That's something that we've always wanted to see. I think that that would be incredibly moving. But we've just never gotten the chance to catch it yet. If you've seen this, you would, you would think like you're back in school doing the right. Pledge of Allegiance. With a way better band. Yeah, I know, definitely. And it's something we've always wanted to do. We've never done, but it really, it's like, it's kind of like a bucket list. Because you, you, you still want to do everything. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I've always wanted to see the Main Street Philharmonic. So to get to see them and to the, do the flag retreat, I think that would be such a cool way to, like, end the afternoon at the Magic Kingdom. But like Veterans Day. Veterans Day would be cool to see it. Like Tony said, we're typically like running or we're like in the park somewhere. We're doing something at that time. So we've never caught it. If you don't have this one, like if you don't have a list or right. something, you'll never to see this, it. ever see this kind of stuff. Yeah. But I would say at least pick out a couple of these and do like something different every time. Yeah, and then the last one um, in the Magic Kingdom is Festival of Fantasy Parade. This is such a cool parade. I remember going to Magic Kingdom as a kid and getting to see, I don't know if it was the Festival of Fantasy Parade that was running that time during the day, but there was also a nighttime parade. At Disney World now in the Magic Kingdom, the only parade is the Festival of Fantasy Parade. That parade takes place at 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. most of the year. Sometimes they'll cut it down to just like one show at 12 p.m. Um, this is a 12-minute parade. 
the biggest pro tip that I can give with watching this parade is to the parade begins in Frontierland, runs through Liberty Square, down to Main Street USA. Don't watch a show from Main Street USA because it's going to be way more crowded. Catch the parade in Frontierland if you can, or in Liberty Square. We watched in Liberty Square last time and had a really good viewing spot. Um, but this is such you a have cool to parade. Create your own viewing spot, people. <laughs> so you need a barrier up. Trash can left or right side. You I think we had a trash can, a right? Hold down chair on the right side or cooler. You need somebody behind you with an umbrella. You need to kind of anchor down because no matter where you're at, there's going to be people that are going to sit on top of you. Yeah, no and matter it, where you're at. So, like, we watched it from Liberty Square. We watched it from Liberty Square outside, like, right next to that little stand where, like, the hand painted umbrellas are. But um, I would probably prioritize watching this from Frontierland if you can, just because it's a little bit less crowded even from there. With our girls, we'll have like our strollers as a barricade. But um, this is a really cool you just parade take to your see. Space. Take yeah, your space. Don't be don't be scared because somebody will take it if you don't. Yeah, and, and another thing, if you ever see anybody <laughs> walking in, walking in the parade just behind the banner, that's because we started that. <laughs> So you can be in the parade just right behind the banner okay. at the very end. And then people, yeah. will, they'll, they'll, people will wave to you. I mean, we, we, we signed a couple of autographs. That was, We did not sign autographs. That you was get, like, You'll get a clear path wherever you want to go. So that was, I guess that was our last trip. We, it was, um, we were walking and the parade was ending. And so we just kind of followed the parade. So come on. And Tony's oh, okay. like, let's go. Nobody else is walking. And now, we are walking right behind the parade. If you the parade, everybody does it now. No, no, they did ever, that they, before. No did they cool. did that, but I we did not them. start yeah. that. Don't listen to Tony, but we did not start that. Actually, I think that was like the Mickey and Friends cavalcade that was happening. And I like, and it was the magic is calling. It was during if the you're 50th a anniversary. Crappy day for some reason. Just do it. Yeah, no, it's so and you can't me, have a crappy tell day. Me you're not gonna have a smile on your face being in the parade with people waving at you. You cannot have a crappy day at, at Disney World, but I totally agree. It was so funny, and I have a video you of it a on my phone leg or something, whatever. Just I, have, I have a video of it on my phone and I showed it to our niece when we got home and she's like, BB, that's what she calls us. She's like, BB, why are you and TT watching, walking in the parade? And it because we were like, the magic is calling, calling. Uh, just video it, but don't video the people in front of you with the banner. <laughs> yeah. no we were like waving. It was really it. fun. None they, the- they, they picked you for the day to be that family. Yeah, it was really fun. Nonetheless, like that was a really fun way to. You're welcome. And the parade. And I have Tony to thank for that. So, heading... Everybody does now. Yes. Um, Shoot us... When and if you do it, get us pictures, videos. (laughs) We want to see it. We didn't start that, but Tony says that we did. credit for it, though. Okay. Heading over to Epcot. Um, Tony said that Epcot is his favorite place to see live entertainment. I would probably say my favorite place to see live entertainment is either Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom. But nonetheless, Epcot has a lot of live entertainment. Um, Oh... Honestly, over at Epcot, there's so much live entertainment to see, but a lot of it really depends on the festival that is taking place at the time. So our favorite festival is the Festival of the Arts, which is starting up in January, running through February. Um, But each of the festivals has a concert series. So there's the Food and Wine, Eat to the Beat series. There's the Flower and Garden Festival, Garden Rock series. There's the Disney on Broadway concert series. And each of these series kind of has a different theme. So like Food and Wine, Eat to the Beat is night there's a lot of like 90s or like bands and stuff like that the flower and garden garden rock series is going to be like more i think they're more like mainstream contemporary bands and then the disney on broadway concert series is um broadway performers from like the lion king or tarzan or aladdin or things like that that come and sing different songs so these showtimes take place nightly from 5 30 to 8 p.m and it's always going to be at the american gardens theater when the festival of the holidays is taking place like it is right now the candlelight processional takes place and that's going to be like their form of the live concert candlelight processional of course is the um live or is the retelling of the christmas story of jesus's birth so that takes place from thanksgiving day to the day before new year's eve and again that's going to be at the american garden theater we have never actually saw any of these. We've been there for festival for festival of the arts and food and wine. But um, when we go to Disney in February, we're gonna be staying at Boardwalk. So I would love for us to go. We've like hopped into like Epcot for the evening before. 
I would love for us to get to go to um, see during our vacation. There's going to be people from Tarzan there as well as the Lion King. I love one of the songs from Tarzan, um, and it just makes me cry. Is it? I can't sing it a little bit. No, I don't want to sing it right now. But I love the songs from Tarzan because it makes me cry, and um, it's the "You'll Be in My Heart" song. Is that from Tarzan or is that from Hercules? No, it's from Tarzan. Um, and I like, of course, like the girls' room nursery is themed to the Lion King, so I'd love for us to get to see those. Um, Go There's, back to the Canada Processional. That's always somebody different telling that every year. Yeah, too. it's going to be a celebrity narrator. So that's another big thing. So that one... Look up ahead if you want to see it and there's somebody you want to see because so it's like, an actor or somebody... Chrissy you know. Metz from This Is Us uh, did it this year as well as Sterling K. Brown from This Is Us. Also, I am blanking on the name right now, but he is so incredibly popular. Um, John Stamos also, also did it this year. There's a lot of really popular actors that do it. And this one actually, so if you're going to the Candlelight Processional, if you're going to Festival of the Holidays, I would personally recommend getting the Candlelight Processional dining package with that one because that guarantees you seating for it. Most of the other ones, if it's a priority for you to get to see like Hanson at the Eat to the Beat um, series, then yeah, then just line up, you can line up early and you can get seating. But for the Candlelight Processional, this is such a popular... um, live entertainment option that people will line up for hours. So I'd recommend getting Yeah, you're not the, walking into this one no. and you sit in the front or something. It's not going to happen. Yeah, so you can eat at like Beer Garden or um, there's several different places that you can have dining reservations at during the day and then have guaranteed seating for the show at night. I or you can just hang out, that. drink a beer and watch it and not even sit down for a little bit. Yeah, but I feel like with the Candlelight Processional, I feel like it's a different experience. Like oh, I feel like you, you want to be seated. Down, yeah. For, not for all the events there. Sometimes it's oh, like yeah. hang out and stand in the back, not even sit down and walk through and just Yeah, and like like the um the one from Broadway, the Disney on Broadway concert series, that one you can really just like walk up last minute and get something. If it's gonna be like a, a band like Hanson or something like that, or Boys to Men's always really popular when they come, then you probably Insane. wanna live in. <laughs> you want to wait in line. In no, InSync doesn't come. Boys to Men comes. Boys. Boys to men, yeah. Um, also at Epcot is the entertainment at the Canada, Canada Mills stage. There's always going to be a variety of like performers here. We've seen um, like a cover band perform here on the weekends before, and so the times and will vary. I would recommend again checking the Disney World app for all of these. There's also entertainment at the Germany Gazebo, but that one's not going to be always available. So that just kind of depends on like when you're going to be there. It's going to be like a German band that's performing. These are all cool because it, it immerses you where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to eat a bratwurst and listen to some some guy play an intro, and I probably know what it is. I mean, they're just fun, right? So I mean, it, it, it give it, it, just, it just makes you slow down. Yeah, if not, you're just walking, done, on to the next. And you don't appreciate anything. It just it adds to it. So yeah, and like over Dude. at like at Epcot too, they also have the janitors, which is these are peop- these are performers that are dressed in janitor costumes that are jamming out throughout Epcot. They perform between nine and three p.m. daily, and they're really just kind of performing in different areas of Epcot. You'll kind of catch them. We've seen them before. Um, at the in the Canada section of Epcot, but it's a really fun show. Like they have like different trash cans and stuff they're beating on. It's a fun show to like watch. Um, also, over in the Japan Pavilion is I'm gonna butcher this, so sorry, but it's the Matsuriza, Matsuriza. Um, performers, Pizza. and they perform from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily in the Japan Pavilion. This is a really cool like drum show that yeah, uh, so grab a sake and a sushi plate and just watch some ladies they're all ladies right yeah bang on the drums yeah they're really cool to watch we've watched them several times before i mean it's not jaw dropping i'm gonna sit here and you know no but it's, it's a cool but performance it, the same thing it's immersion in the land you know eat and drink and watch them yeah and i'm like sad to say this but there used to be some really cool acrobats in china that have never come back since the vid happened but that was like oh that was a really cool like acrobatic performance we got to see when we were in Epcot. Um, and then, like I said, depending on the festival that you're at, um, if you're going to Festival of the Arts, there's a ton of live entertainment that takes place. There's like acrobats that do different shows. There's a guy who paints murals to Disney music. There's a lot of different live entertainment, just depending on like which festival you're going to be at. Also, 
I will give an honorable mention to the, um, what were they called? They were living statues that were in Epcot for the Festival of the Arts. They, again, never got. Like three years ago? Yeah, they never came back after COVID. But they were so cool. You know, like those, if you've gone to like any downtown area, there's like someone who's like, who looks like a statue and you stand in front of them and they start moving. That was the same well, thing. That kind of thing was never like a cultural representation. No, of, but it was just really so it's fun. Probably, it's probably just an outside hired, you know, acrobat. You know, not acrobat, just kind of whatever. I, well, I think, it was, I think it was for Festival of the Arts, yeah, because it's like the visual perform, visual and performing arts and culinary arts. I guess arts. I never really brought back anything like anything like that or No, but I missed that. Or, we have photos of that from our 2020 trip, and I think we have some on our fridge. It was just really fun. I, I, I know. I liked it too. Yeah. And then over in Rose and Crown, there's a Rose and Crown musician. Um, this is going to be another pianist that's playing like different cover music, Disney music, anything like that. They take place, it takes place each day from 1.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and this, again, is going to be a show where you can like take requests and stuff like that. It's going to be kind of the same concept as a Casey's Corner pianist. Yeah, you might see a couple of the same guys there. Like Neil? Neil. Yeah. Yeah, you like people that perform at Casey's sometimes also perform over at Rose and Crown. It's a really fun um, time. Rose and Crown's just like a really fun, like casual pub type atmosphere. Also, over in the America um, Adventure Pavilion in the Rotunda is going to be the Voice of Liberty. We actually have never stopped to watch a show, and I want to watch it so bad. Which is in the front, and then behind you have the um, attract- American Adventure American, show. Yeah, with all the animatronics. Yeah. We want to see that again. And then it has the most, I think, of any other attraction. Yeah. Show. It's a show. Yeah, it has the most animatronics. They're really cool animatronics, too. It's a long show, but it I think it's, I want to say it's like 45 minutes. It's not included on here because it's not live entertainment. You're a history buff. You definitely don't want to miss it. Yeah. Everybody and- said it's boring, but it, you can't not, you can't pass this one up. With so many countries in Epcot, it would be easy to skip over the America Pavilion. And I think we did that our first trip because we were like, I want to see stuff in Morocco like or China or things like that. that. It's not just people. Yeah, because you're like, the oh. show is it. I mean, it's- You're like, I know American history. But what's really cool about it is walking through the American Adventure Pavilion, like just walking through inside, there's a lot of different exhibits and stuff. I want to say there was a Native American exhibit when we were there. There's also a jazz music exhibit. That, like the exhibits change out. So it's really like Dinosaur a small museum. There. Are there? Probably somewhere in there. <laughs> um, and then... You gotta appreciate it all. I mean, then you gotta just walk through really just like hang out and these like obviously you can't do all of these on these lists, but like pick a couple... To do as you're walking through these pavilions. Yeah. You do every other pavilion, stop and see something. Yeah, and the Voices of Liberty are, a, I've heard their music before. I haven't seen it live in person, but it they have beautiful music. So I want to see this and one it on our next trip. Christmas time. Yes. Their attire and how they sing. On Christmas time. During Christmas time, it's like the, the Dickens carolers and they change into Dickens outfits. So it's a really cool show that I think we should prioritize Some on our next say trip. even brings a little sparkle to the eye. I mean, all of Disney brings a sparkle to the eye, you know? No. Tony says no, but Hardly. he just needs to wait until we get to Disney. Um, Maybe we have the girls there. At the end of January. appreciate it too, not just stare at the lights. We'll... Maybe. No, the girls are going to be so excited, like grinning and smiling, and you will be a, a puddle. He'll be a puddle, and we'll come back and we'll tell everybody he was a puddle. Okay, Check back so um, then there's a couple of different shows that are not always available. So the music of Mexico, the times vary on that one. And then again, the entertainment at the Germany Gazebo, that one's not always available either. Music so, of Mexico is mariachis, mariachis that'll play yeah. outside Mexico. Yeah, and it's it just depends on when you're there We've as to whether or not they're them, performing. But we live in San Antonio, Texas. We can see them at any restaurant pretty much. Right. So. For us, it's not a big deal to see those guys. Yeah, they're. I think they typically perform um, more in more popular times of year. So, um, like, more crowded times of year. So, like I said, they're not always available to see. Over at Hollywood Studios, my favorite park, Hollywood Studios, I feel like, has a lot of live entertainment because they have a lot of shows. Um, so, first up is the Disney Junior Play and Dance. This show we have honestly, obviously never seen before because we have never been with children. That could change in the near future. But um, this show takes place every day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's a 10-minute long show. It takes place in the animation courtyard. So you can join, like, Doc McStuffins, Vampirina, Timon, and Mickey in this, like, play and dance party. 
Um, you definitely feel like a creeper being this one. It's your vlog. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if we, if we, like, we That's obviously, weird. yeah, no. It we, looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> not for, not for a grown, grown man. <laughs> Maybe in a few years with the, with the girls, we'll just hang out in the back with a drink and sit down. I heard that get AC and benches in the back. Yeah, they've got benches in the back. Um, so if your kids are wanting to take part in the show and you don't want to sit on the floor, you could always sit in the benches in the back. But like Tony said, I mean, you're not going to go to the show unless you have a kid with you. This next one, deceiving the people. Yes, this next one is um, for the first time in forever a frozen sing along celebration, and I personally believe you should prioritize this on your vacation. Everybody enjoys this one. I enjoy this one. Yeah, so this one they is grown man jokes in there too. Yeah, they do political jokes. <laughs> they do a really good job of um, they everybody in. Of yeah, immersing the kids in the story. But also telling jokes that like adults are gonna get that kind of keep you that kind of keep you laughing. Kids get. No, <laughs> and this show it's so much fun to sing along to. I very unashamedly have like sang at the top of my lungs at this show to the point where other people are staring and looking at me like, why is this grown adult woman doing this? But I really don't care. I think you had your ears on last time. Was what they were? I think they were trying. No, to I had I took my ears off because somebody asked me to take my ears off, and that's proper etiquette anyway. Yeah, but your kids weren't singing the having fun, so whatever. No, the we the were. woman behind me was not having fun with their children that day, and we were having fun because we we're always having fun at Disney. Another pro tip: don't let anybody ruin your day. No, just just sing louder. Yeah, another pro tip Smile is smile harder. Why would you, like? Why would you time. care? You're never going to see these people again. You should have the yeah, best right. day of your it's life every motto, single yeah. day. You never going to see anybody again. So who cares? No, you're. No, go peeing on walls or anything. But like, <laughs> what? Yeah, don't mean we've seen that. No, we've never seen that at Disney. Yeah, we have. No, Kevin or Devin. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he was trying to pee on the wall in line. So, but like, <laughs> wasn't a grown man. It's probably like a you had to be there moment, but it was no, like. Really? Um, in 2021, and we were waiting for Peter Pan's flight, and there was this... So the lines were long going through... Uh, we, everything was social distance at that time, and Columbia Harbor House was closed, so you had to, like, they had the queue go through Columbia Harbor House to get to Peter Pan's flight. <laughs> this guy was in front of us, and I think he was, like, he was from, like, the UK, and he had three little boys with him, and those little boys were, like, into everything, and one of them's name was Devin, so and Devin kept getting in trouble, and Devin, like, took his shoes off, had his shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> And then there was one point where we were like going through the queue line, and all of a sudden his dad looks over and he's like, "Devin, no!" Uh, we all turn around. This guy, those kids, got his little pants down. I mean, he's I, trying to he's pee. He's obviously done this before. Yeah, he this was trying. His first. He was no, trying to be rodeo. in like a backstage area. So then we go through Peter Pan's flight. Peter Pan's flight is an is, has like an Omni Mover conveyor oh, belt that it uses. That. And all of it's a sudden, he's like, times. he's like, Devin, no! And Devin's laying down on the conveyor belt. And then we get off Peter Pan's flight. We go to Haunted Mansion, and Devin's in Haunted Mansion. And all of a sudden, like, the um, Omni Movers stop because, again, following us. Devin, is, Devin is stopped on the conveyor belt. So we finally lost Devin. But, yeah, no, I Going guess back, we have don't seen let that. Ruin your day. No. And, you know, my biggest thing is I always tell Tony, like, I want to live the life of the YOLO. Meaning, like, I know YOLO is, like, a dumb phrase, but, like, meaning, like, I want to live my life with no regrets. And that's something that I have always talked about, like, on Instagram and stuff like that. I want to live life to the fullest. So this is the whole point of why you go to these places. Exactly. So you should go and have the absolute time of your life. I don't care if I'm singing louder. If you're going going here and thinking, this is just a music park, I'm going to waste a lot of money. Right. My kids are going to annoy me. I'm going to have you stressed out and have to go and work after this. Wrong mindset. Don't no, go. like but. you can find me in the parks, skipping through the parks, l- like jamming to Disney music, singing as loud as I can. I listen to Disney music with my girls every single day. Like, have but the most have fun. Choice, yeah, yeah. Have the, you should be having the most fun, and if you're not having the most fun, then you're doing it wrong. It goes with all the stuff we're talking about. You're not going to do any of this stuff probably if you're in that mindset of I want to just get this stuff done. And you get right. Your you're not going to do any of these filler stuff. This is the whole. This is half the reason these parks are here because a lot of it's history. Yeah, and like go when you go to the um, Frozen sing along, like sing along to the music. Like I don't care if you're a grown woman yeah, I wasn't singing. Really singing, but you know, still <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but you wait until the girls are into Frozen, and you'll be singing along with them. By Little Benny time, and Henny, you'll be, be singing. Wearing earmuffs because it has been a long time hearing that song. <laughs> True. Just 
over small world in there. Over in Toy Story Land is the Green Army Drum Corps. We actually have never seen their um, performance. We've seen them in the parks. We've never seen their performance. They had a pause during COVID and didn't come back for a while. Yeah, this one takes place every day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Again, check the Disney World app for the specific times. But it's in Toy Story Land. Um, they have a really cool show that they perform. I love getting to see the Green Army men just any like anywhere that I can catch them because they're so fun to see. Um, so I would prioritize that one, especially if you have a little one who loves Toy Story or something like that. Um, over in the Echo Lake area of Hollywood Studios is the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. This is a show that takes place every day between 1045 to 430 p.m. Um, and this show is an hour long. This is a really fun show. It's kind of like a behind the scenes look at how stunts are made in the movies. And this is actually one of the only attractions that is left from the original concept of Hollywood Studios, which was actually um, MGM Studios when Hollywood Studios opened up. It was really like focused on like how the movies are made and all of that stuff. And so Indiana Jones is the only thing that's left from that original vision. So they only have like four show times all day long. Yeah, it's we not like an ongoing thing where there's 30 minutes. It's a pretty long show, and there's only about is it about four. Yeah, and it's it's a big stadium. During if you're going there during like more crowded times a year, it could be hard to get a spot for. We've never had an issue for it though. You pretty much always get a spot. You may even be standing at the back. We've like, done the four blocks. Yeah, five or ten minutes, but you yeah, can get, get like a good, you can get a lightning minutes. lane for this one if you want to, but you don't need nah, to. Nah, I nah. wouldn't get a lightning lane for the um, Frozen sing along or for Indiana Jones. I think they kept this thing around because of the, they're going to be doing the ride. Bring in the yeah. Ride. Dinosaurs are going to get taken out. So Disney announced at D23 that um, they are planning to um, retheme part of Animal Kingdom. And the area that is where Dino Land USA is right now is going to be getting a retheme. We love Dinosaur, but unfortunately I think it's going to get rethemed to Indiana Jones because it uses the exact same track that it uses in Disneyland for the Indiana Jones ride, so it'll be an easy retheme to do. Um, Hard to believe this was not set up. Yeah, so this will probably bring new life back to the Indiana Jones stunt spectacular. The show is really cool, and it's really popular if you've never seen it before. But if you've seen it before, it's the same show like over and over again. So... I bet they do something different. It will bring new when life the to the show. Came out, they had that little drink station set up. They were trying to do certain little things. Remember in the yeah movie? And I think they may add something to this. When you go to the Indiana Jones show, look at the theming on the outside of the show. There is a well that's over on, if you're walking up to the stadium, it's on the yeah. left-hand side. Um, and it's got like a rope where you can pull. If you pull that rope, it's Indy down in the well. It's so really fun. Pull. Yeah, it says do not pull, but actually you're supposed to pull it. And it's like Indy down in the well. There's a lot of really even cool the like left, theming over there. I think it's on the left side too. You can kind of walk back where there's a side. Yeah, it's exit. on the left. And there's like some stuff, like some like prop looking stuff that, you know, like that could have been used. It looked like it was just, just details of just, you know. Yeah. Kind of time killers when you just, you know, before or after the show. Or- yeah, and Hollywood Studios has a lot of live entertainment. That's one of the things that I really love about Hollywood Studios. When I went as a kid, Magic um, MGM Studios, which is now Hollywood Studios, was my favorite park for the same reason. But it was different back then because it was all about how movies are made, and I loved that. So I really love that they've kept the Indiana Jones stunt spectacular there. Um, a lot of people are, I mean, it, you've got to see it no matter what. Some people will say it's a skip if you've done it before. I don't think so. No, we Especially watch it every time. You know, unless you're park hopping and you're not going to stay in this park all day. Then I right. Guess, yeah. Then you know, you Maybe it. we didn't watch it. We one time park hopped from Hollywood Studios over to Epcot. And I told Tony, like, I like park hopping, but Hollywood Studios has so much to do that I felt like we missed out on stuff. I think we didn't watch the show that day just because we were doing so many other things we maybe, like, hadn't done before. Well, that was one of our, like, second hopping, or third you, trips. You just, you're in a rush. Right. No, definitely. So you won't, you won't when we go to when we go to um, Disney in February, we're like we're planning on park hopping, but we're utilizing it to park hop just into like Epcot because we're going to be staying at the boardwalk and like grabbing food or something before we go on to another park. But with that said, like we go to Disney regularly, so if it's your first trip, I wouldn't do that. Um, back to the live entertainment beauty and the beast live on stage is also a show that takes place in hollywood studios it's on sunset boulevard this takes place every day between 11 a.m to 5 p.m and it's a 30 minute long show 
we've seen this show before and we liked it, but there is a um, sing-along over in Epcot to the Beauty and the Beast, so we always prioritize that one over this live on stage show. With that said, when the girls are ready to see this show, like we absolutely will see this with them. They've made some changes to it since we saw it, and that was back when like social distancing was a thing, so they weren't able to like interact in the same way that they were. Um, yeah, this one you definitely feel really immersed in. It's like a, you know pretty high quality i mean it, it doesn't it doesn't feel rinky dink it, you know no. it's a good and it's a good a good length show too this, obviously if you or anybody likes beauty and the beast which pretty much everybody does i think you definitely gotta do this one at yeah least once. like and this is another show that i will be belting out at the top of my lungs i love the music from beauty and the beast i would say beauty and the beast is my favorite movie as an adult as a kid my favorite disney movie was the little mermaid but beauty and the beast like would be my favorite movie as an adult. Like, my favorite princess movie, I guess. Um, Another thing is, too, like, don't... We do it all the time. And, like, this one, there's only five five showings. So, you got 11, 1, 2, 4, and 5. A lot of times, we'll do it like, oh, well, you know, we'll come back later. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. And no. And then you don't see half of the shows, the things that you wanted to do when you are at home planning this thing. You, and you're like, you know, <laughs> you end up doing the same things over and over again. Yeah. So, you literally, if you, if you have any interest, just do it the first time when you're close to it. Yeah. So probably not going to come back later and do it. Or yeah. it's filled up. You never, you know. And this show takes place in, an, in another, like, outdoor stadium. And it's a pretty big stadium. So you don't need to necessarily, like, get to the show super early. If you want to be down front for the show, yeah. I would maybe I arrive a little fills, early. Uh, you'll always have somewhere to sit, I think, for the most part in this one. Yeah. This, so the first time, the only time we've seen this show, we had just gotten off a rock and roller coaster for the first time. And I screamed my head off. It was my first time riding Rock and Roller Coaster. Not Tony's, because I took not the first time I was supposed to ride it. I screamed my head off the entire ride, so I was coughing like crazy. And it was back... You gotta scream in this one. It was back in 2021. So we go to Beauty and the Beast, and I'm coughing so bad, because my throat hurts so bad. And everybody, of course, thinks I have COVID. And was, like, turning yeah, around looking. Shut. It was so uh, awkward. I was like, I promise I'm not sick. I'm so sorry. I'm about to go sit somewhere else. <laughs> I was like, I am so, so sorry. No, we always warn everybody that's around us going on the rock and roll coaster. We just, we tell them, we're screamers. <laughs> <laughs> so you grow into, ah! Yeah, and that's a sad thing. Like, it's totally off topic. It feels but good. Rock and roller coaster is going to be closed in February probably when we're there. And that's like my favorite annoying, ride. Annoying. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. Over at Animal Kingdom is Festival of the Lion King. This is personally my favorite show, I think, to watch in all of Walt Disney World. I can't wait to take the girls to this because, of course, the nursery is Lion King themed. Um, This show takes place every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's in the Africa section of Animal Kingdom. So if you're walking through Animal Kingdom... You go to the Africa section, there's the Dawa bar there, or if you have um, reservations at Tusker House, the Lion King um, show takes place just on the other side of that. This is a 40 minute long show. I cannot say how much I love this show. There are live performers in this show. There's animatronics from the Lion King, there's Simba, and there is Timon and Pumbaa, and Nala's not in the show, right? No, it's just Simba. Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa. And there's a giraffe. She is. Maybe she's on a float or something. I don't recall. Well, I was talking about the ones that were on the float. Like there, so there's the animatronics. There's also birds. Um, there are live actors. Like there are acrobats. There's um, the oh, what do you call them? The monkeys, the tumble monkeys. And there's like flamethrowers. It's have a, for a little cool bit. That show. Was, yeah, that was not the same without those guys. But this was definitely one you cannot, you can't skip. No, but they have more show times. They got 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six. So I mean, you get opportunities. This same, this is one that some people will use a lightning lane on. Yeah, it, because this will be wait, a lot. You'll be waiting a while, but you can also eat or drink in the in the line while you're chilling outside. Right. But pretty much everyone's gonna get in. If not, they won't kind of let you through. This is a show that if you want to get a good spot like down front for it, I would prioritize getting there early or using a lightning lane for it. Otherwise, you're gonna be squeezed in. It's like bench seating in an indoor auditorium. Um, and there's four sections to it, and so you'll be kind of like squeezed into a specific area um, if you get there a little bit later. Yeah, this is definitely one that you ha- you've got to prioritize like when you're around there and like make sure you see it. I cry every time we watch the show. The music makes me cry. Like it's just so beautiful. 
watching this show um and i cannot wait to take the girls like obviously when they go in when we go in february they won't like fully comprehend it um but as they get older like just getting to see them like light up in the show will just make me so excited it's uh, just a fun one in in the temple monkeys and the fire twirling guy i mean they got some it's not all it does have its little moments where it's like it's kind of ch- a little cheesy you know it's kind of kind of got you know but then it has hey. some, it, it is what it is you'll say it wasn't all good <laughs> And they have some like, okay, that was pretty good, you know. That's, you yeah. Know, this guy's twirling around some flames. I mean, hides it in a box, and yeah. And then tell monkeys are the prize. Yeah, they're my favorite. Yeah. Because you always think about it, how do these guys not screw up? I mean, you're. It's one of those you kind of want. You don't want it, but you're waiting for like you know something, no. and it's never happened. Okay. Right. They're on. The no, they're so. It's so precise. How and do you it's do so that cool. that many times a day and nothing happened ever? Yeah, it's a really, really, really cool show. Um, over in the Dinoland USA section of the park is Finding Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond. This show... All right, controversial. People. ...takes place every day from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. It's a 25-minute long show. I don't think you need to get to this show early. There's plenty of seating for this show. Um, I liked the show when we went and saw it. In, was it last trip or the trip before that we saw it? I think we skipped it last time. I don't think it's... It's not a must-do, but... Um, you got to do it's got some really cool effects. It's dark. It's really cool relaxing. live actors. So it's a good it, time frame. If you've seen like the um, Lion King like on Broadway or something like that, it's that same concept of like those um, actors like holding different animals and stuff like that. Well, we said it. You if you haven't seen the movie, you're not going to like the it. The second movie. Yeah, cuz you don't even know what's going Finding on. Finding Dory. Right. I wouldn't have liked it if I didn't I was like, oh, okay, there's a reference. Like, you know what you can, you know the story. No, I agree. If not, you're not going to, yeah. You're just, yeah. It, and it may, it'll be cool, but you're not going to be like, okay, well. So that gives me an idea. I think something that we need to do, because our trip is coming up, um, we leave at the end of January, like very end of January. What we should do is, what we always do before our trips, is make a list of show, movies we want to watch before we go to Disney. Stuff that's going to relate to stuff that you're going to do. Right. It, it sounds dumb. So what we're gonna sounds kind of so let's do it it really like it'll you're immersed you when you're there makes you a reason why you want to watch it want to stop want to do the rides or whatever yeah so let's do later on um after you finish recording this let's make a list and then we'll share it over on Instagram of like things we recommend watching before you go to Disney um like Avatar watch that Avatar before you go do the ride watch for one I mean if you haven't watched any of these movies it it half for one it's not gonna make sense. Right. It may feel like a waste of time in a long, long line for nothing. And it just, you're just not going to, you know. Watch Remy's. Watch. We'll make a list. We'll make a list and share that. Because like Tony said, otherwise it just doesn't make sense. But this one has 11, 12, 1, 2, 30, 3, 30, and 4, 30 for this one. So, so I guess six. maybe it does fill up. If there's that much of a demand for the shows. Which well, just when we uh, went, it wasn't something that it was like, oh, like there were a bunch of people crowded around us. It wasn't like as popular as The Lion King or anything like that. This is like one that. too that you can actually, you can bring a snack and a drink. I think you too. can, yeah. At least the time we it's a nice this. area in the air conditioning. Before 2020, this show was longer. They cut it down and revised it. Um, like Tony said, this one's controversial because a lot of people are like, you could skip this one. It's a great show. You, skip you don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it every time, but it's a good show. Over in the Africa section of Animal Kingdom, one of my favorite things about Animal Kingdom is the live entertainment. For the fact that probably it really... this whole section is probably our, one of our favorite sections. Yeah, it really immerses you in this like street atmosphere. and. do. Joe Rohde, who was like the lead Imagineer on Animal Kingdom, really did an amazing job of immersing you in Africa when you're in the Africa section or Asia when you're in the Asia section. Like, I cannot wait to get back to um, Animal Kingdom for those reasons. So, we don't put it on the list. You have to watch Imagineering. Yes. I mean, it just lays out this whole, every everything. Yeah, and so in the Africa section of um, Animal Kingdom, when you're watching the Imagineering series, you'll see like how much detail they put into it. But in they the Africa, these places, it's not just googling it. Look, they go there to these places. Yeah, they go to like they Nepal. Back, they go to they bring Africa. Back people to make certain things like the roofs on these. Right. I mean, it's, it's pretty yeah, crazy. and where they their Harambe village acrobats um, perform in and Africa. They bring back people. Right next to, <laughs> right next to the Dawa Bar every day. Um, right now, it's between ten forty-five and three forty-five p.m. If you are walking through, if you're going to the safari, try to check out the Harambe Village Acrobats. It's a really, really cool show. Um, Interactive, especially for kids. 
you're walking by, there's going to be, you can just cruise on up and they'll get you involved in it. You can sit, what we typically do is we sit over at the Dawa bar. You can grab a drink if you want to. You don't have to. There's usually plenty of tables available. You can still want to get the other two if you want. I'm oh, sorry, that's me. Um, and then. Tell them about your corn. Oh, and then, <laughs> hold on, you can watch the show from the Dawa bar. Also in the same area is the Tam Tam Drummers of Harambe. These guys are really cool too. Um, they perform like different songs and stuff like that. They'll have different, um, they'll have like different themes to their shows. But there is the Kora Tinga Tinga is this guy who he performs like on like it's not a drum. He's actually he's not just in that area though too. I know, but you know what? I was looking him up today because I love him. Like I have video of him from a trip in twenty twenty. The mascot of that area. Yeah, but you know what? He's not on the Disney World. He's not on the Disney World website before. I don't know if you looked on the app right now if you could find times for him, but he's not on there. So I don't know if he's not performing right now or what. Know when he's gonna be there. (laughs) <laughs> well, true. This guy probably just clocks in and shows up when he wants. Yeah, because if you look him up on Google, like a lot of other people have him, but he just uh, walks around. He does. He walks around. He's not going to be in that it's same section. Like a, 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 you know, a, harp, a free roaming, a harp thing. It's beautiful music. Like I love. And he has this deep voice. He talks in. Yeah, I love, 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 love welcome. getting to see him perform. Is it welcome to Animal Kingdom? Um, what Tony was referring to on the corn is right outside We're of moments, special moments. the um, the safari past where the Tam Tam drummers perform or the acrobats perform. There is the it's the Harambe Market. It's like a little cart. It doesn't have a whole lot. Yeah, basically. but one of the things that they're known for is their corn on the cob. Corn on the cob is not like some novelty. But this corn on the cob, they like dip it in butter and they have a bunch of seasoning that they put on it. You can ask for it without butter. Um, they have a bunch of seasoning on it. I was getting the corn on the cob one time because everybody talks about it and I wanted to try it. And I we're always wearing our anniversary buttons. And oh, shit, gotta do it. I was wearing the button and this girl handed me um, the corn on the cob and she's like, don't worry about paying for it. It's on me and Mickey today. And I cried because I love that. Like that's just the Disney touch. She's like, you didn't pay for that? <laughs> we'll go back in line again <laughs> yeah so this time we'll be wearing anniversary buttons Tony's always wearing his birthday buttons the girls will be wearing first visit buttons which will probably take up most of their outfit um but and nonetheless it's just such a fun like way to um celebrate at Disney World and then over in the Discovery Island section across from Flame Tree Barbecue is the Viva Gaia Street Band. This is a really fun street band to listen to, especially if you are going to eat at Flame Tree Barbecue. We love eating at Flame Tree Barbecue, especially for like lunchtime at Animal Kingdom um, because it's right on the water where um, the character flotillas go by. And if you're like waiting for your food or something like that, the Viva Gaia Street Band is really fun to catch, especially if you just like just like sit with the drink and watch them. It just brings that whole area back to life. Like yeah, we've we've done we've done both. So we cruised by first thing in the morning and just hung out and watched. Just kind of like oh right, cool. it, those things are like the, like the magical moments. Like when you're, you're walking by, oh, like we got a little bit of pixie dust. Somebody just you know hopped up on this the stage just for us. Yeah, but no, they have the show times at ten forty five, eleven forty five, twelve forty five, two, three, four, and five. And their shows are really short. So they're only going to play a few songs. I think it says that it's a 30-minute show. But it doesn't say on on their on the tip board. But yeah, definitely if you're going to eat lunch at Flame Tree, definitely go at one of those times so you can... Thing you yeah, can and watch. you can sit behind Everything Flame Tree. So you don't have to even watch it. Yeah, you can sit behind Flame Tree Barbecue along the water. Or if you want to prioritize watching to. this show... Get your food, and then there's, like, curbs <laughs> outside Flame Tree Barbecue. Like, have no shame and sit on the curb and watch the street band perform. So, my pro tip is don't do that. Because you can hear them. You don't even have to even watch them. Oh, Unless true. Unless you want to watch them. Do we normally But they're do, fun to watch. Is we, go, we do actually sit in the back by the water, and then you can also catch the floats in the back cruise around with the... That's true. The car, so, then you get it. Cause you can still hear, them, hear the music back there, too. Yeah. It's flame, like this is a really really fun um, band to watch. I just think that the magic of Disney is calling. all of this. Like, the magic of Disney is calling, and we are headed back at the end of January. And I am so excited, We're but <laughs> we are answering. We're answering with annual passes really for twenty twenty four. But um, no, <laughs> um, but the. It's just such an, a magical thing to get to do live entertainment. I do miss over at Hollywood Studios. There used to be the Citizens of Hollywood, and that was really cool. It was like these like um, 
old fashioned citizens of Hollywood that didn't come back after 2020. But Disney does so much with all of the live entertainment. If you had to pick one of these to say this is your live favorite live entertainment, which would you pick? Well, I said Epcot. Right, but what? Well, because right now when they did the, the festival right now, it was like the acrobat. Oh, you're talking about Festival of the Arts. There's so there's so much there. And that's starting like January 19th, I think. But overall, I mean, these are the things that you, when you get home, you're like, dang, I wish I had known right. that. Right. I wish I had known that was there. I wish I had seen right. that. And, you know, they just add so much, like, not just filler, but add so much to your trip when you can do a handful of these from every single park when you're there along with all the stuff that everyone knows that you're going to do with the ride. Yeah. The, some of the shows and, and all the food. Because this is the stuff that a lot of people don't know about, it, or if they do the times they don't know the times or whatever so definitely like do research where you go and pick if out you, a couple of these you want to do each part if you had to say that you what what was your what would be your favorite live entertainment in magic kingdom like just putting you on the spot magic kingdom i probably would say dapper dance if we we're doing it in the morning when we first walking in because it sets it up yeah it sets the day sets a tone and then when we're eating lunch hearing the mr piano man <laughs> yeah I would say my favorite at Magic Kingdom, I would probably see the Festival of Fantasy Parade. I love watching the Festival of Fantasy Parade. Um, there is like the drag, the fire breathing dragon. That's really cool from Maleficent. Um, but I would also say the Dapper Dance is really, really cool. Over at Epcot, I love, I don't know, like I, at Epcot, I think I want to prioritize on our next trip going to one of the um, cons- the live on bra- uh, the on Broadway concert series, especially because it's from Tarzan and Lion King, and I think we would love that. I mean, everybody have. Right. At Hollywood Studios, I think that I want to, I think that my favorite is probably the Frozen sing-along, just because I have such fun memories of, like, singing along with the show. I think that one would be really fun to take the girls to. Mine would still have to be Indiana Jones. I don't think it ever changed. Really? Or it never changed. Yeah, and it's hard because that show doesn't Somebody's change. Somebody's got to stand strong against the haters. <laughs> and then over at Animal Kingdom, hands down, as much as I love the drummers, as much as I love Cora yeah. Cora Tinga, Lion, King. Lion King's got to win. Yeah, you have another answer just wrong. Yeah, I mean, that like our girls' like room literally has a sign on the wall that says Akuna Matata because like we love the Lion King so much. And then it's Mr. Harfman or whatever the instrument is. Yeah, Cora Cora Tinga or Cora Tinga Tinga. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what he's called. That's, that's what, that like, what his performance is called. called. No, that's what the performance is called. We're find out what so, called too. when you're at Disney, try, when you're at Animal Kingdom, try to find him. But, you have anything else for today? That's it. Just get it done, folks. Yep. Get some of it done. Yep. So, now we are going to go back to the drawing board, create a list of movies and, attra- and things we need to watch on Disney Plus before our trip. We'll change the diaper. And keep preparing and probably change the diapers. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. But as always, um, be sure to give us a follow at the Double Dose of Disney fam on both Instagram and TikTok to keep the fun rolling. And please leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform that goes so far to help us continue growing our audience. We will see you right back here next week.